Welcome to the DJE Podcast, where you will learn about real estate investing from real life examples. Here's your host, Devin Elder. Hey guys, welcome to the show. It is my great honor today to have Steve Davis with us. A little bit of an introduction. He's a real estate investor and mentor slash consultant for over 30 years. He's invested in over 100 single family houses and over four thousand doors of apartments. And Steve was a uh, pivotal for me in my transition many years ago, going from corporate to, uh, you know, multifamily owner. So I'm super excited to have you on Steve. Welcome. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, if for those of you that are just listening, you got a nice view of your office there, Steve looks like, uh, looks like you'll have a nice office set up there. Where, where are you guys based out of with the office? Right. We're in Houston near Kirkwood and I-10, uh, just right beside Beltway 8. Got it. Got it. So um, just to kind of jump in here with a little bit of an introduction, uh, you know, f- for folks that haven't connected with you and, and you, you've got a big presence, a lot of folks know who you are, but maybe there's a few listeners that don't. Um, what's what's kind of your background? Where, you know, where'd you grow up and, and how, what was your path to getting into real estate? Well, my path, I'm originally from Asheville, North Carolina. That's where I grew up. And then I came here to go to Texas A&M and uh, more or less failed out of A&M. But I had uh, a friend of mine had started a business and I was helping him with that business. So I, I didn't think twice about it, but I came to Houston and I mean, let's just be honest. I saw the women in Houston and I said, I'm never leaving. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> I moved down here and met my wife. We've been married 34 years. She's spectacular. And uh, what happened to me was I was working in the health club industry, and which I loved. I love fitness. I love helping people lose weight and get in shape. But I won a national sales contest, and they sent me to Hawaii for a week. When I got back from Hawaii, they cut my pay by 20 grand a year. And what it did is it woke me up to corporate dependence that the highest risk position in the United States is to just have a job, just to be solely dependent on a job for your income. And so I started buying books and CDs and boot camps on really a bunch of different stuff, but I kept going back to real estate and the Carlton Sheets package really resonated with me. And I started wholesaling, then flipping. I joined a real estate investor club. I actually worked there for a long time. And I met so many people that were encouraging. I think I, I, my life changed because I was a member of a club and hanging out with like-minded people. And then I learned small apartments, uh, bought a little 10 unit uh, that, and you'll love this. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't understand NOI. I didn't understand cap rates and I still made money. (laughs) And I was like, Oh my God. But the problem was when I sold it, I didn't understand the NOI to cap uh, influence on the price, sold it for probably 200 grand less than it was worth. Uh, And you were probably happy to get the price, right? I was, I was like ecstatic. I walked away (laughs) with a couple hundred grand, but I left a couple hundred grand on the table because I just didn't know what I was doing. Um, so that was how I got into it. Then I started passively investing and that was when I kind of came to the realization that I liked teaching more than I did real estate. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong. I would never sell my real estate. I love the cash flow and the wealth that it builds, but I'm not a great operator of apartments. I'm a good operator. Now, single family, I'm great at, I, I love it, but I leave, you know, the great operators like yourself you guys are the people I want to invest with. So I love to teach. And that's where I spend my time is teaching, motivating, encouraging, and consulting. Love it. Love it. Thanks for, for the overview. Um, I love the story about the 10 unit. Still made money. Didn't know what you're doing. Didn't even get your, your, uh, you know, your full price. I got kind of a similar experience on a six unit. I think I left some money on the tables, my first little multifamily, but I was so happy with the sales price. I couldn't believe it that that I was, uh, you know, hey, it felt like a win. Looking back, was like, yeah, I probably left some money on the table. But that's well, uh, let me right. share share a story with you. 
I bought a 23 unit, I think it was, and he had definitely left some meat on the bone. Yeah. It was a uh, two gentlemen brothers. And I said, you know, I appreciate it, but you know, this thing's worth more than you sold it to me for. This was after the fact. Sure. And he goes, Steve, we've learned something. Never complain about a profit. Yeah. And it dawned on me. That's right. If you get too greedy, it might've stayed on the market another six months. Then the velocity of the money is in effect. I was like, that is genius. You know, if you can make a profit, you don't have to get every piece of meat off the bone. You can leave some for the next guy and still do well for yourself and your family. Yeah, I love it. That's such a good sentiment. You you know, it's that pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered uh, thought that um, I, see, I see some people, especially new in the business, really kind of fighting for every penny at every turn. And, you know, there's negotiations. You got to make things work. But um, there's a whole lot of deals to do out there. And, and the, the constraint is time. You know, it's not... Yeah. It's not finding the perfect deal and scraping every penny. It's uh, the constraints, really your time and, and how you're going to build your team and, and get it done. So I love that. Um, talk, talk to me a little bit about your, your company now about real wealth and kind of the genesis of that and what you guys are, are doing with that. Well, I had worked at another company, which was solely really real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate. But I kept noticing that there was, there's missing pieces in a balanced life. You've got really eight major. There's more than eight, but the eight majors, uh, romance, family, travel, uh, fitness, wealth, and career. And, and I may have left one out, but we have eight. And I wanted a program where we taught everything, where we had classes on fitness, on nutrition, on family, on romance, even have travel agents come in and talk to us about traveling around the world Love it. as well as real estate. Plus I wanted the real estate to include every aspect of wholesaling, flipping, single family rental, apartment rental, self storage, mobile homes, because self storage and mobile homes, they are really rocking. That space is they're kicking butt. They're doing the exact same thing we're doing with our apartments. Uh, so that was really what I wanted to create and we're right in the middle of it. And it's, it's super exciting because the members, my students, they don't come back to me and go, Hey, thanks for the class on NOI or how to understand cap rates. They're coming back to me and going, Hey, thanks for that fitness class. Huh. I've lost 30 pounds. I, I have one member who's lost 50 pounds since January 15th. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And, and all I did was just show him what the difference between aerobic and anaerobic training was, um, eating habits, just basic stuff. So that, that was why I wanted to create Real Wealth Academy as a, a holistic approach that it's not just the money, it's family, fitness, romance, all those things as well. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Every time I get a little too far off the deep end on kind of my real estate or finance goals, and then I step on the scale and go, hey, man, that one's just as important. You know, it is, uh, it's, and it's hard to balance that. I think in our minds, because, you know, you talk about buying a 10 or $20 million building and it's this big deal and it's, you know, it, it can be all consuming if you let it be, but shoot, man, if your marriage falls apart along the way because of it, um, that wasn't really a win, you know? Yeah, I agree. Some people, I think it comes down to this. It's easy to get rich, easy as pie. If you sacrifice your fitness your relationships, your spouse. It, it's easy to get rich. The trick is to get rich in all the arenas, yeah. maintain that relationship, maintain that fitness and just really thrive, not just survive. Yeah. That, that, that's such a great point. That's something you told me many years ago and a hundred percent honest here. I mean, that's something I really kind of base my life around. This is almost, you know, a decade ago to really say, Hey, I'm going to go pursue this real estate thing and, you know, but I'm not, I, I'm not going to lose sight of spending time with my kids, I'm not going to lose sight of keeping my marriage uh, good or great. And that's, that's influenced a lot of my decisions along the way, a ton of them, man. And I, you know, I credit that to, to, to you telling me that many years ago. So that's, that's the oh, real I deal. I appreciate that. 
Yeah. I appreciate that. That's the real deal. Well, it's exciting. I, I, I like that you're rolling in different elements into the, into the program there. Um, I'd love to hear some deal stories, man. I don't know if you've got some, some, some crazy uh, deals or, or things that uh, were notable or, or, you know, real good or real bad on, on some of the deals along the way that, uh, that you participated in over the years. I don't know if there's anything that comes to mind. <laughs> I think, I think I'd have to go back to 2008 and nine yeah. to get a, the funny stories. It was, uh, and I love this story because not a lot of people realize we make money in both the up and down markets right. and that we actually thrive in the down markets. Like I think 2021 is going to be a down market as we recover from COVID Yep. and there's going to be tremendous opportunities. Uh, so, I mean, it was all of my properties and I think I was in about 3000 units in 2008. They all dropped in value 20, 30%. Yeah. I didn't care didn't care because they were still cash flowing. Yep. And if you'll remember the rent started going up, it was crazy. So that's probably the funniest story to me. And then we were picking up deals at 20, 30% below what they were selling in 2006 and seven. So it was, it was an amazing time. The problem is I was only passive. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't the leader of the deal, so I don't have the good, scary stories about kicking drug dealers out, kicking hookers out. Um, <laughs> but my partners do. Yeah. You know, uh, one of my partners actually put on a bulletproof vest and grabbed his nine millimeter and walked into a unit and threw out like six drug dealers. <laughs> Just literally threw them out on the street where the police were waiting to pick them up. Uh, that's probably the funniest story I've got. But he cleaned that place up and uh, it, it's just amazing what it takes to run these things, especially when you're buying D properties in a C neighborhood mm -hmm. and you're getting ready to move them to C. You got to get rid of those D tenants immediately to turn that place around in 18 months or two years. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, those D properties are, are uh, they're special. They're special with They're a special, sp special set of circumstances. <laughs> and a special set of people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Man, there's, there's no shortage of stories around that stuff. Um, so we're, we've obviously had an interesting year. You know, we're talking here kind of late 2020. COVID hit in March. It was, uh, nobody really knew it was going to happen. It's, it's done what it's going to do. Hopefully we're coming out of it. But um, then, then, you know, I always say you've, you've got headwinds, you got challenges always, and then you always yes. kind of got some tailwinds always, you know? And so tailwinds right now, I think are, are where interest rates are. It's like ridiculous, you know, sub 3% interest rates that we're seeing. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on kind of what you guys are seeing for, for the next, you know, the rest of this year and, and, and into next year on, on kind of what you think might happen with, uh, you know, multifamily and, and some of the other asset classes you guys are playing in? Well, I think that the interest rates, I had Blake Yarborough of Capital Concepts on my radio show yesterday. And I, I asked him blatantly, I said, come on, what's your real opinion? Yeah. What do you think the interest rates are going to be? He goes, they're not going to change for probably another 24 to 36 months. So when you talk about 3% interest, that's free money because inflation is 3% right. or higher. So they're giving away money. If you're sitting on the sidelines right now going, I don't know if it's the right time to get in, you're never going to get in because they're giving you the money for free to get in. Um, I do think that we're going to see, let me get my hand up so we can see it. I think it's going to be January, February, and it's going to go down. I think the values are going to drop. We're buying two apartment complexes right now that are that are 10 to 15% below what they were just in January. Wow. I think we're going to see stuff 20, 25% below what it was uh, in January and before January. So I think there's going to be a dip. Do I think it'll last as long as the great recession 2008? No, not at all. Yeah. I think that people are going to recover because 2008 made us all stronger. You know, right. it's the old, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger that we're going to look at this and go, eh, been through this before. Let's kick butt. Let's turn this around. And I think the market's going to turn around very quickly, uh, probably 18 months to two years at the max. 
So we're going to buy everything we can get our hands on this next, this coming year, uh, mobile home parts, uh, self storage and the apartment complexes. I love it. Yeah. I love that you guys are expanding into those asset classes. I, I want to talk a little about you've coached and mentored countless people into, you know, investing in real estate for cash flow and appreciation, tax advantages, all the reasons we love it. I, I have to imagine you've seen you're start, you've seen some patterns emerge over all the years of coaching people. What what do you say to somebody that's maybe got that comfortable corporate job, but they want to start branching out? They've heard good things about real estate. You know, what do you what do you say to that person that's kind of trying to dip their toe in the water and, and explore real estate? Well, it's something I mentioned earlier. The, it's coming to the realization that there's no such thing as job security. Right. If you're 50 plus, that is the most discriminated against group in the United States. Um, I see people 55, they lose a job. They're having to take half the pay to go to another company right. or they're unable to find employment at all. I'm watching my clients. They get fired. They get laid off. They're literally taking stuff off of their resume because they're overly qualified and they're scaring prospective employers away and they have to lie to get a doggone job. Yeah. So once you realize that and that the job is temporary, it is a passing thing. You have to realize that when you own real estate, that's permanent and that the income the residual income is permanent for the rest of your life. That's the position you want to be in. So for people who have a great job, congratulations, keep it as long as you can, as long as you enjoy it mm -hmm. and you love it, but make sure you build a second stream of income that is equal to whatever you're going to need in retirement. If it's 10 grand a month, 20 grand a month, whatever your quality of lifestyle demands, You've got to have a second stream of income and there's no better way to do it than with real estate. I love it. Yep. Powerful message. I love it. Um, tell us a little bit about the radio show. What, what does that look like? And how, you know, what, what is, oh, what is okay. that all about? Yeah, we're on Monday through Friday, 2 PM central time mm -hmm. in Texas on AM 700. Uh, the voice of Texas. It's a conservative radio show. And we're on from two to three and I cover just about everything. Yep. I will talk about the psychology behind becoming financially independent because it does take a mindset. What a lot of people don't realize is that your brain becomes financially independent before you do. Right. The brain has to be right to ever become financially independent. The money comes second. The way that we discuss it at Real Wealth Academy among the members is we have to think and act like a millionaire before we'll become a millionaire. If you wait to start acting like a millionaire till you have a million dollars, it'll never happen. So a lot of the time is spent on the psychology. Then we do case studies of single family rentals, case studies of flips, and flips are rocking right now. I think we've probably got about 30 houses in the middle of rehab right now among the members. Awesome. Uh, yeah. And then of course I do multifamily case studies. I do self storage case studies, mobile home case studies. And that way people can see by listening to the show exactly what we're doing. They can see the rates of return we're getting and what they can expect. And then it's a question and answer format. So People can call in and say, hey, I'm scared of this or this worries me. And I can show them how we address that particular issue. I love it. I love it. So you guys have the office in Houston. Um, I imagine some of your members are there. I don't have any stuff in Houston. I've got friends that invest out there. But give us a little overview of the, the Houston market if, as you know, from a real estate investor's perspective. You know, I'm the type of person that believes that all markets can make money right? with a few exceptions. There's parts of California that are just insanely overpriced, New York and so on. Sure. But if you go to the outskirts of those areas, you're able to do it. So when I look at Houston and you say, well, tell me a little bit about Houston market. We're investing 
in our rentals, single family rentals, we stay between 150 and 220. Mm -hmm. That's the sweet spot. When you get above that, the rents start dropping per dollar spent. But when you're in that sweet spot, there are areas all over town where you can find that price range home. When we look at our flips, we're generally 250 to 400. I don't like fit flipping the gigantic 500 to, you know, $1.5 million homes, even though I've done a few of them sure. because of the days on market, the days on market can really go way out six months or whatever. And you could have done two $400,000 deals in the time it took you to do that one 800, but you don't have all the stress of waiting. When I look at apartments, I, I think there's a lot of mismanaged property uh, there's a tremendous number of deals in forbearance, I think, and those are going to get hammered early 2021 Right when the COVID ends, COVID response ends. So I see Houston as an incredible opportunity, but I don't want to discount the fact that Orlando's a great opportunity. Miami's a great opportunity. Um, you go to Tennessee, you go to Nevada, you go to Phoenix. Oh my God. Phoenix is rocking. Yeah, and it's going to get better. It's going to keep getting better. Um, so I don't think it's better than any other place, but boy, it is a fantastic place to live and it's a fantastic place to be investing. Yeah. I love it. I, I think it's kind of an unfair question to, to say, Hey, tell me about a market. It's like, well, listen, it's a giant city. <laughs> can you find some terrible deals? Sure. You know, can you find some great deals? You betcha. So yeah, I appreciate that though. Uh, Texas in general, just rocking and rolling. I mean, the whole world's moving yes. here. Business friendly environment. Uh, awesome place to live. You know, a, a lot of the cities in Texas. So, I mean, love it. Love it. Um, Where are you at now? I forget. San Antonio. San yep. Antonio. Yeah. I love yep. San Antonio. Great. I love to go there just for a couple of days. It's so relaxing. The river walk, everything is just so peaceful. Yeah, I love that place. Yeah, San Antonio's good. And we fly under the radar a little bit next to Austin. You know, Austin is, is on yeah. fire and, and uh, that's fine with me. You know, we're just trying to find some deals here and there where the numbers pencil and, um, you know, some of the stuff in Austin is mind boggling. But, you know, in five, 10 years, uh, today's prices probably look like a smart buy. Who knows? So, yeah. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Their rents yeah. are, do seem to be going up as quickly as the prices. Right. So it does seem to make sense. I'm still seeing a lot of people buying in Austin. And like you said, dollar per unit, you and I look at it and go, whoa, yeah. they're going, that's Austin. Yeah. And our rents are $200, $300 more than yours yep. per unit. Yeah. And you slap some uh, debt on there at 2.8% you know, yeah. interest only for five <laughs> years, you're going, sign me up, man. <laughs> sign no up. doubt. We just did a refi. I think uh, Robert Martinez did a refi 3.25 and yeah. pulled out like 8 million or something like that. Unbelievable. Crazy. And for, you know, for folks listening, that's money back to investors. That's not a taxable event. It's a refinance. So, you know, you can pull money out and, and, and give it back. That's, it's not, it's not a taxable event that year, which is crazy. You know, it, it is, it's, it's one of the most exciting things about it is when somebody like you goes in, you find a property that needs more than TLC, way yeah. more than TLC. And you turn that property around, raise that net operating income. And the next thing you know, property you paid 20 million is now worth 30 million. That's just an incredible story. And then you refinance it, pull out 8 million and you owe no taxes on it. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. It's incredible. That's one of the reasons we're all, we're all doing this, playing this game. It's good stuff. Yes. Yeah. Well, listen, Steve, this is awesome. If somebody wanted to reach out, uh, we, we're going to put some notes in the, uh, about the show, but what's a good place for, for somebody listening to connect with you and learn more about what you guys are doing? Sure. Getrealwealth.com. Getrealwealth.com. And what I have is a free sample class. It's in the upper right-hand corner. That would be the first step. And that's available online across the country or live in Houston. Outstanding. Getrealwealth.com. We'll link to that in the show notes. And I recommend you guys go check it out. Steve Davis, it's been my pleasure having you on. Thank you so much, sir. My pleasure. Thank you. All righty. Talk All right. soon. All right. Take care. 
Thank you for listening to the DJE podcast. For more information, please go to djetexas.com.